Hello everyone and welcome to another update on the Curson counteroffensive. Lately we've seen updates on the south still being a stalemate as well as the center where the Ukrainians tr keep trying to push but they don't manage to take any new ground. They are still at a stalemate. And the center, uh, which is the important part, we have seen a possible encirclement of Russian forces in this forest area here. So I have two theories. Either they have been encircled in this open area and are pulling into the forest, or they are uh, guerrilla fighters sent there to basically uh, keep the Ukrainians pinned down by having a few troops located there at all times to prevent any sabotage missions. <clears throat> So generally either a big win for the Ukrainians or a kind of middle ground uh, outcome. Further north we see the Ukrainians trying to advance to Bilohirka so that they can expand their beachhead on the other side of the Inuit river. In the center we're still seeing Russian counterattacks around Sukhis uh, Stavok as well as Kostromka where the Ukrainians have actually decided to go further in and fight at Besimene, Besimene as well as Schleschleve. And something very interesting is the fact that these villages here were captured really quickly, while the ones further south are seeing a lot more resistance. My theory here is that uh, it adds even more credit to the fact that the Russians actually planned this and knew ahead of time that the Ukrainians were going to push in this specific area. So they allowed them to get some easy takings at the start to pull more Ukrainian troops in. And then they uh, ambushed them and fought from the north as they tried to push the Ukrainians southwards. And then they are meeting heavy resistance in these other villages, uh, keeping them from advancing further and basically creating this salient here. Considering the fact that the two villages are under attack, that means that the forces here in the south are actually mostly encircled. As no uh, further equipment and supplies will be able to come to them, considering that the road towards them is uh, engaged in heavy fighting. So generally speaking, these are fighting uh, with everything they have. And if they fail, they cannot retreat. And if they succeed, they have no way of resupplying, so they will eventually be uh, cut down. So this whole offensive depends on whether or not the Ukrainians are able to uh, defend these two villages or whether or not the Russians are able to take these two villages, as that will cut off this whole offensive and essentially push them back to the starting point. Uh, further north, we still see the Russians trying to push. However, the Ukrainians have advanced a bit here around Akhnilske, where they have actually captured parts of the city. And fighting is still ongoing, where essentially the Russians are trying to capture back the pieces of the city village that the Ukrainians have taken, and the Ukrainians are trying to advance further. So generally, I think this village is very important because there is this uh, river between uh, Serichne and Arch. So generally, these two are the ones at uh, fighting. Then there's also the possibility of uh, troops coming from Ivanivka. But I think it's actually a combination of troops from Ivanivka and a possible river crossing somewhere from Sarikne, as they have the ability to cross from anywhere on this whole river line. So they might be tr uh, planning something similar to what we saw at Lysyshansk. Uh, two months ago, where we saw uh, the Chechnyans do a river crossing here in the north as the Russians were pushing from the south. So something of a similar to this, where they took this north and pushed towards cutting off the road here to the west as the Russians were pushing towards Wachnukamyanka and uh, closing off the escape route for the Ukrainian uh, soldiers essentially cutting it off from the north and the south. And once they started moving further west to escape, the Ukraine, uh, the Chechnyans also crossed here at the center of Lysyshansk, cutting the village in two, or the city in two, uh, keeping half the, the defenders in the south and the other half able to escape. 
generally speaking, we might be seeing something similar to that from the Ukrainian side, where both here, they want to do it around Davidiv Brid, as well as here, where they are trying to possibly do it at Echen Helske, where they might be able to uh, cut them off from the south, cutting off this main road and uh, pushing them from two sides if they succeed at that. So I think that's generally the, the plans uh, for both sides, where the Russians are trying to create a stalemate and keep the Ukrainians from pushing. The Ukrainians are trying to achieve encirclements by attacking the Russians from two sides, which is why we saw at the start they pushed towards Bruskinsky to uh, connect with Davidiv Brid and uh, essentially cut off this whole area. Which seems to be filled with troops, considering that some were encircled in this forested area. And it will be very difficult for the Ukrainians to actually clear this forest area, as it seems to be tight forests, as well as uh, the ability for the Russians to just place mines everywhere, uh, preventing any heavy equipment from entering, which would mean that the soldiers have to go in. And I have personally gone to visit a forest a couple of weeks ago, just to see what kind of landscape they're fighting in and get a better insight on the situation. And I can tell you, when you're in a forest, you can't see anything. It's as if everything is clouded. And generally, people can be hiding anywhere. They can dig th trenches at the side of the road and everything, which would completely uh, ambush you and you would have no idea that they're there. Uh, of course, there's the counter mission of uh, uh, infrared uh, goggles and so on. However, they cannot see through the ground, so trenches are usually uh, fairly uh, well built to uh, counter these things. So if there are any trenches in this forest, then uh, the Russians definitely have a huge advantage uh, preventing the Ukrainians from taking over the area. So essentially, as long as they have supplies, they are able to keep the Ukrainians at bay until they eventually run out. So that's the situation on the front line. Other than that, there's a small update around Isium, where we see that uh, Krasnopilia has been captured, which I had reported earlier. However, now we have photo evidence on uh, Twitter, where this guy, Chris759, has geolocated the area, where he has spotted these buildings and compared them to the map to make sure that these are the correct locations. And eventually we got to the location that it is around uh, Krasnopilia and Dolina, meaning that these areas are both uh, confirmed taken by the Russians. And this is actually also very, pretty significant considering that uh, in this area, we can then see that the Russians are in control of this highway, which goes towards uh, Sloviansk and they're able to uh, basically have nothing between them and Sudrove on this whole front line. So essentially, if they want to cut off this uh, pocket, they can attack from two sides now. One from the highway, where they will be pushing and keeping any Ukrainian uh, defenders from uh, helping. And they can cross straight to Sudrove, and they will cut off the village of Prishow and Tetsyanivka, which will allow the Russians to do a river crossing <clears throat> and essentially, smiley face, and essentially uh, capture this whole area, uh, allowing them to push towards the forested hill here to the north and giving them a good overview of the city and the surrounding villages, giving them a good position to eventually shell the city and uh, create a bridgehead for a future invasion of the city. And essentially also, if we look at the supply lines, cut off the positions, we can see that in this area, they will also be able to shoot at the supply lines uh, that go in the south, as the artillery technically have this long of a range, uh, allowing them to essentially just keep shooting at them, uh, which they already can from across the river. However, with the Ukrainians capturing, uh, having control of Mayiki, it is difficult for them to position any artillery on the front line. However, by controlling this hill, they're able to position some up there as that's easier to defend. And they are at exactly 11 kilometers from the supply line. So instead of taking Novakovka or Novodimitrivka, uh, they can just 
push towards this area. However, of course, it is very challenging as first of all, they need to actually take the hill, which the Ukrainians are definitely using. And second of all, it's 12 kilometer crossing in, in difficult terrain. So generally it's a very difficult uh, task, but they are now able to do so with the capture of Krasnopilia and Dolina. That's it for this update. Thanks for watching and have a great day.